She's an educator, a stress bender, an owner of Aping Tai Chi. Let me welcome the stress bender herself, Miss Shifu Shirley Chalk. Welcome. Thank you so much. Oh, Karen, it is such an honor to be on your show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Even it's your so nice voice is, you. is, is a stress bender. Like even, <laughs> even your, I'm like, okay, <laughs> I feel, all right, I can bring it down. I can get Zen. All right. Take me, take me back. Um, how did you, it, cause Tai Chi is cultural, right? It is, it is, is it religious? Is it spiritual? Is it culture? How did you, how did you get indoctrinated into this? Yeah, you know, it is cultural. It is an important part of Chinese culture, but I got into it because I study it as a martial art. So a lot of people don't realize that Tai Chi is an internal martial art and it's a very, very unique martial art where it's all about understanding forces that are coming at you and how do you react to those forces how do you not tense up to those forces um, and it's based on a philosophy so it's not a religion although people do find it quite spiritual to be uh, practicing it they call it moving meditation so you kind of do get into that uh, meditation mindset but at its heart and soul it's a martial art so i actually stumbled on it uh, kind of by accident. Well, literally by accident, I tore my ACL and I needed surgery. Uh, I was studying other martial arts under my master, who is uh, one of China's uh, renowned martial artists. And so she did Wushu Kung Fu and also Tai Chi. And I was in my 20s. Even though I'm Chinese, I had this misconception in my mind too that, oh, Tai Chi, that's like the thing that old people do. <laughs> in the park, really... right? You see them in yeah, the park. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And my grandfather did it when we lived in Taiwan. And I, I spent my youth living in Taipei with my grandparents. And my grandfather did it in the courtyard. It's like, oh yeah, that's like something that I'll do when I get older. But you know, in my 20s, I wanted to be the Kung Fu girl. <laughs> and then I tore my ACL and I needed surgery and I needed to recover. And I didn't want to just stop and not do anything. So then I joined in the Tai Chi classes. And I discovered that wow this goes so deep um and to study it for the internal martial art you actually it's actually a lot harder than when you do the external martial art because you have to go so deep within yourself um you have to face some honest truths about yourself, your weaknesses, your strengths. Um, and um, you have it's pretty cerebral to, to quiet your mind and really tap into your own body, feel where the tension is, to be really honest with yourself if you are tensing up or not. And then I just never looked back. I just kept going and going and going. Um, so I still study it. I train in it as the martial art. And uh, when my master moved to Austin, she handed her school to me to take over. And that was four years ago. So my mission is to introduce Tai Chi beyond what a lot of people think it is so that people know more about what it is. So I actually quit my finance career to take over this school and, and uh, I'm on this mission. <laughs> I, I got connected with you, um, Shirley, because, you know, I feel like we're in a constant state of war in this mm -hmm. country and especially as black people. It feels like, you know, I'm, I'm listening to several callers. There's frustration, there's anger, there's exhaustion. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, you know, Ahmaud Arbery, there's a trial. We, you know, we, it, there's always this, and then Virginia, and it's this constant, like, yeah. whoo, that I felt like there needed to be. I know we got Capoeira, which is African based, you know, martial arts mm -hmm. that also uses dance, and, and a lot mm -hmm. of Africans used it in on the islands when we were brought here in chains. Uh, but you know, all of these uh, methods to me are all you know indigenous, and 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 they come from us because that continent gave birth to everything. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm. I want to find us in the middle of this Tai Chi. So when yeah. you said it's using 
I guess, other people's aggression against them? Mm -hmm. Like, explain Mm -hmm. it, you know. Yeah, I think I need to start with the philosophy. So in in English, we just kind of shorthand this activity that we do as Tai Chi. But um, the word Tai Chi is actually a philosophy. And it has nothing to do with what you do with your physical body. It's a philosophy that I think um, can be explained explained best by showing you an image. So this philosophy is first, there's what's called wuji. Which is a circle. So so for people who are listening, it's a circle. It's a circle. It's a circle. Right, right. Um, So it is a circle with nothing in it. And this concept wuji is extreme void nothing. Everything started out as nothing. From nothing, Once there's motion, then that nothingness splits into two. One side black, one side white, the yin-yang swirl. So this is an important part of the concept is from nothing came two. It's not from nothing came one and from one came two. What exists And then the opposite of that also exists. So this philosophy means that you accept that there is an opposite to everything. If there's right, there's left. If there's up, there's down. And for every point of view that you have, an opposite point of view exists. And that opposite is going to be pushing against you to oppose. And it's finding the balance between the two. This is the philosophy that you embrace um, when we do this activity that is called Tai Chi Quan. So in Chinese, the Quan means fist. That is the martial art that we practice. But it's rooted in this philosophy that it's a balance of opposing forces. And this is a sign of just constant change that the world is made up of constant change, dualities trying to oppose, but also balance. So this is the philosophy that we embrace. And the activity is rooted in this philosophy. The thing that makes this martial art so effective for me, and I'll talk a little bit about how I actually used it every day, not in physical combat, but in just dealing with emotional battles and all the things that forces people trying to attack, trying to get their way, trying to get ahead at your expense and all of these things that everybody faces every single day. This philosophy is so beneficial to help you be able to do what you need to do Um, and make that space for it to happen so that if somebody's pushing at you, then you don't resist. So the idea is if you resist a push that's coming at you, what you're doing is you're actually giving strength to the other person. You're giving them something to push against, right? So like if you are trying to push against something, you have to feel the thing that you're pushing. So If you resist, then you actually give the other person power. You're giving them something to push against. Um, If you push harder, which is the tendency that a lot of people get is, okay, you're not allowed to push me. So if you're going to push me, I'm going to push you harder. Then that prompts the other person to get even more tense and want to push harder and then just escalates, escalates. Um, so this concept of Teji is if somebody pushes you, you just give them that thing that they're pushing. So if you think of it as physical combat martial art, you give them that part that they're pushing. So you lean away you, from it. And then you right. clock them in the head with right. the other hand. Yeah, right. So that's an important part is um, it's not just retreating either. So it's not just running away. Um, if we just run away, we can't accomplish the things that we want to do. 
then you still give the other person power is, you know, they, they block you and you run away. It, that's not really an effective strategy. You know, so if they attack you, this idea is you give them exactly what they gave you. Um, so you give away the part that they're trying to push you and then you give them, let them go to where they were going, they, then they will fall. And uh, so it requires very little effort on your part because yielding, you can do this all day long. Um, if you're attacking, then you get exhausted. The other person gets exhausted. If you're yielding, redirecting, you can do this all day long. The other person will get tired and then they'll eventually probably just stop. And then you can do what you need to do. So that's like the uh, concept of Taiji in action. Shesheni. We share, we share. So, um, eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. I can actually listen to you're like a ASMR in human form. Like I can just listen to your voice all day, uh, and we need that. You know, um, I'm a naturally combative person, so the notion of yielding uh, is uh, not how I'm wired. But it absolutely mm -hmm. makes perfect sense because it's not what is expected either. So, you know, there's an expectation that I'm going to because I'm a bull keep coming. But if I yeah. yield a little bit, you're not expecting that. You're going to fall right on your face and then I'm going to stomp you to death. <laughs> not physically, verbally. Tiny. <laughs> well, um, I love what you're talking about and the giving them back. But so I'm responding to both you and to Karen. It isn't an effort for you to confront. I think that you could do it all day effortlessly. That's so that if someone confronts you, you actually can confront them back because it is effortless for you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so this, this um, concept is, it, it, it's based on the reality that people are going to be pushing against you. That this is a part of life. That you should expect that people are going to be pushing you, testing you, testing your limits. So when we build something, the first thing that we do before, like if we're building a skyscraper, uh, before we allow it to go into you know, uh, uh, occupation, we put it through a stress test, right? We have to see, is it going to be stand a hurricane you know many things we put a stress test to see how is it going to react when a lot of stress is put at it um and that's basically what taiji is for us as people for our minds and our body it puts us in this little safe space where we practice where we are trying to see how does our body react when a little bit of a push is put at us? Do we tense up? Can we actually relax? Um, how are we moving? Can we feel where the tensions are? This martial art doesn't work at all if you're tense. So if you can actually learn how to relax your whole body, connect your whole body, that's something that you can then bring into your life. We feel energy. Like we feel each other's energy. When we feel aggression and we react to that with aggression, then that's just going to grow more aggression. We can't control other people. So this is, I think the basis is mm. we cannot control other people. We can only control ourselves. So if you can control your own reaction to these situations, knowing that people are going to push you and um, you just kind of shrug it off and keep going forward. Um, what a lot of times will happen is uh, you will diffuse a lot of the negative and aggressive energy too with your own reaction. You showed us the Tao. And so for me, I find that whenever I am in truth, that truth as i'm gonna i don't I, I i guess i should define it but when i'm in something that is in that sort of pure nothing place mm -hmm. it brings up both poles yeah and it's when i know that i am in a place of 
the purity of what is because the poles come up fully on both sides. Yeah, I love that. I love that. We're talking with uh, Shifu Shirley Chak. What, is this your birth name? Your 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 Mandarin. Your Mandarin. You, you uh, yeah. So Shifu is the word for teacher. Teacher. It's, so okay. yeah. So you see, you hear from Hong Kong movies a lot. Sifu. Sifu is Cantonese. Mandarin is Shifu, and that's just an address for teacher. And what's yeah, your birth and, um, name? Because Shirley. Your birth name is Shirley. Is Shirley. Yeah. Your mom made, born... Your mom named you Shirley. Yeah, yeah. I was born in the U.S. Okay. And then uh, I, uh, although right after I was born, my parents, they had a jewelry store. And I think I brought um, some bad luck because a month after I was born, their jewelry store was burglarized. I, they lost everything. Uh, so I went to Taiwan for my grandparents to raise me until my parents could kind of get their business back on their feet. So mm-hmm. I was born in the U.S. and then I spent the first seven years of my life in Taiwan and then I came back. Uh, we're talking with the ultimate stress bender, the, the last <laughs> stress bender. I like that. Uh, the stress <laughs> bender. And I, I just uh, gave a, a clip so people can see you on YouTube uh, to the folk that tweet out things for us. So mm-hmm. uh, we're going to retweet that. Uh, Shirley Chalk, uh, she's a Shifu. Uh, for me, when I watch things like Tai Chi, uh, again, I'm type A. So it's hard for me to, to do something that slow. Like, I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, when do I start sweating? All right, where's, the, you know, it's like, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, you know, and even, even the cadence, I'm like, okay, okay, Shirley, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, how do you prepare to do these movements? Um, and, you know, is it for everybody? Yeah, I do think that it is for everybody, but not everybody has the patience to do it. <laughs> And I think that the people who don't have the patience to do it are the ones who will really benefit it the most. Because what Tai Chi is, it's not about the movements. You know, so people, when they think Tai Chi, they think, oh, it's this choreography where you do these beautiful movements, you're moving slowly. Um, and that it has its benefit. That's some exercise that is wonderful. But the real benefit is for you to let your mind tune in to your physical body so that you identify where the tensions are in your body. Uh, So you probably don't realize how much tension you hold in all the different parts of your body because you just never paid attention to it. But your mind can tune in And once it can feel where the tensions are and you teach your body to actually relax those tensions. And there's this really cool feeling because um, it's so experiential. And the reason why people make this a lifelong journey is really hard um, in the very beginning to take that second step. You can take that first step, but to take that second step, you need to be able to relax. You need to be able to tune in. But once you take that second step, then it's hooked you for life because you learn how your whole body can connect as one and your mind can connect as one. And the movements are from your intention. So when I teach, um, I, I live stream on Twitch. So I've been introducing Tai Chi to a whole generation of younger people. And we do these exercises where I teach them that you know you can move purely from your intention, your mind's intention. And we go through these exercises. And so like, what is this sorcery that you just <laughs> performed? Um, so once you experience those little things, then it kind of hooks you to want to do more. Well, uh, you have hooked me. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing some rehab, and uh, so I was like, let me figure out. And I think there's a reason why older people do it because they have the wisdom to to know how important it is. You know, you don't get that wisdom. That wisdom comes with time, which many of us yeah. want to rush. But uh, I think that's why so many older people. But I'm glad you're introducing it to young people because they need to learn this discipline as well, this mind body connection and. Uh, thank you for answering the call when I put it out on Twitter and to come in mm-hmm. today to give us a little, we needed this Zen. We needed this today. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. 
Yes, she fools Shirley Chalk. Follow her at the Stress Bender on Twitter, and uh, we tweet out all her information as well.